February 17th, 2023. This is the S&P 500 E-mini Future 2000 tick chart on the Thinkorswim platform. So there, before I continue, I just want to point out that you don't have to watch the whole video. If you're just interested on specific times of day that I took the trade or I saw something interesting, just go down to the description below. Everything's timestamped. All right, so today there were real no real catalysts because it's just a Friday, but it's going into a holiday weekend. This is what the chart looks like today. There's a lot of whipsaw cho choppy up and down, up and down. But I also saw a trend line pretty much here and then one down here. This is how I marked up my chart, including my trades. I only took three trades today. So I'm going to get into it now. Hopefully uh, go quickly so the video doesn't take too long. So this is how it looked. Let me just get rid of some of this. Okay. So this is the big trading range that I saw early on because right here, right at near the open, I drew here. And then actually this is a little bit higher at the time. It's actually up here, but then later I dragged down to create three triple touch, three triple touches at the bottom. So let's just dive in. This is the pre-market. I don't trade the pre-market because I'm usually asleep and I'm on Pacific Standard Time. So this volume here is certainly is lower. It's not as volatile as when the tra trading day opens. So my strategy, my plan doesn't involve trading the pre-market. It's just good to see it though and also see where my lines might be. So originally I had my trading range up here where this gray line is, but then I dragged it down to here once I saw the second touch here because I thought, okay, well maybe I did keep in mind it might be up here, but this is just kind of what I played at the time. I did see a trending up channel right here. And right at the open, I did see a first entry long here, then a second entry long, but I didn't take it. I didn't think it was a good trade to take. It is early in the day, so it's hard to know exactly which way things are going to go. There is enough room to get up to the EMA, but I decided it's not worth taking that risk. However, when you start off from here, you can see a first entry short, then a second entry short. It's also a triple test because I had this line here. It has just a holding pattern, but even though it's a triple test, I thought it might have been good, but I didn't want to take it because even though there's a big bearish candle, there's uh, I don't know if it's going to take the entire move all the way back up. And there's like just barely enough room to get down to the EMA before, you know, you might see a bounce. So I just thought I just, you know, it's getting also close to this trend line. Decided that it wasn't really worth taking the risk of that particular trade. Turns out it would have worked. Of course, you don't know that at the time. However, once you see this candle close, this is a very, very good candle. However, you're also getting really close to the EMA now, and you're also still getting really close to this trend channel. So to take it at that, that point, even though it's a smaller candle, smaller risk, smaller risk to take, it still feels very sketchy. So I let that one pass, just kind of waited, watch price action continue to go down. It comes up, touches the EMA. Right now, the EMA is being holding prices down, but it's hard to say that that's reliable because it was kind of supporting prices previously. So it's just something to just stay away from, wait for more price action to get a better read. So now you see a second touch, and I do draw this trend line at this point. I did draw these intermediate shorter ones just to kind of guide me to see where things were going. And then prices continue going down. I didn't take any trades. It's confirming that this trend channel going down is good because I have one, two, three touches. I also have a pretty good solid confirmation out, out down at the bottom, but I don't see any good setups at this point. Prices continue and makes a bottom here. And at this point, my uh, trend line was actually still up here, my trend trading range. But since this is the first breakout, even though I had this here, I had a secondary support line down here. And of course, later I cleaned things up and this is what I settled upon. But just keep in mind, I am constantly adjusting the lines, constantly adjusting the support and resistances as the trading day goes. Then I delete it later once. Prices have moved past certain points. So prices keep going up. It breaks up. I draw this trend channel going up now, but I don't have super confidence in it at this point. I do draw this measured leg, but it doesn't come into play yet. And this actually isn't existing at this point in time of the trading day. Prices go up. So I see like a potential, potential trade setting up because it is chopping within the trading range. Now, I do see a second entry long possible here. So it's in the trading range here, which I established from these two lines. Down here, I just kind of arbitrarily put it down here because actually this was kind of high right here. But then once it broke out, both on the bottom and the top, I said, okay, let's see what happens. And it came down to the bottom. I eventually drew it closer to here because I liked it meeting up with the EMA. And I do see a potential second entry long and a failed breakout. So it's a possible trade. But I didn't take it because this bear, this bar is 
it is a doji, but it is a bullish doji, meaning it's like there was a lot of pushdown, and at the end, the bulls were able to pull it back up. Keep in mind, this trading range, this trading channel doesn't exist yet. So I didn't have that as a confirmation. Turns out it would have worked. Prices continue moving. I did see a second entry short, but it is counter trend to what's going on because you're seeing one big move up, then it pulls back and the second move up. At this point, you know, you're not really sure because I wasn't really sure if it's a if it's going to continue going up higher, even though this is a good bearish candle. You're saying a first entry short, second entry short, but if on a different time frame, you could have seen it as a first entry short. This could have potentially been a second entry short here, but then you know it violates it. So I wasn't sure what I was seeing. So best for me to just not take that trade. Although it would have worked, but you know, that's neither here or there. Prices continue chopping around. So like this trading range isn't that important anymore because it's moved past it at this point. So I went ahead and chopped it off short. Because you know it was important here to see potentially if there's a trade setting up, but at this point it's not it's not important to what you're looking at. Price is continuing moving up. I do draw this trading trend channel going up now because it does confirm three pretty solid touch regions: one down here, two, three, and then I drag it up to this point. And it's touching twice now, and now it has an overshoot. So it has an overshoot. I'm thinking it might come back down to touch the bottom of here, but I don't know that yet. I need prices to tell me that. Thumbs down. Now I get the violation on the other side. So that's encouraging. It's coming around. It looks like it's entering another trading range. So I established this trading range just to see if, you know, help guide me. I did at one point have this lower down, kind of cutting through the bottom here. Prices continue to move. And this is where I actually take my first entry. So I'm trusting that this trading channel is going up. It's a bullish trend going up, even though it has, you know, this characteristic at this point, it is a little risky because I am taking this, but I like this big hammer right here. And this is like a second entry short that I'm thinking just failed because here's the new low, first entry short, second entry short, it broke below. But as you can see, it came right up to the same high as this signal candle. So even though this is a second entry short right now, I'm thinking it's going to fail. So I don't have my order yet, but I do have it kind of ready to execute right here, one tick above. And during this movement, when I saw it break up, that's where I entered and I got my fill. And then I was able to get out and I also was able to trail a runner, but the runner got taken out by this candle. But you can also see that this is setting up as a potential visual second entry short because technically it's a first entry short, second entry short, but you can count this one big leg, which is what I did with this measured move. And then I drew the second one here. So technically there's another trade here that would have been you know, worth a shot. However, I didn't like that this signal bar is you know pretty strong even though it's kind of coming back down bearish you can see it's a first entry short second entry short and you didn't have to take it on the engulfing coming down but at the time you don't know it's going to spike back up so your trade in my opinion to be safe would actually be one tick below or you could set it up back here after this candle has closed you probably set for the next candle one tick below because if setting it right down here would be risky because there's not enough room to the ema and you're riding against this upper trend channel now so it's likely it's going to bounce so to take a short here i would believe it'd be pretty risky turns out it would have worked of course you don't know that at the time so it's better that you stay out because you don't want to just take that trade and you know just pray that it's going to turn okay for you certainly i don't want to so prices continue going down okay so now this trading trend channel isn't important anymore but this trading range seems to be important now because it looks like it's at least holding because it looks like this test here this test here it broke out failed broke out failed and now i'm thinking it might come back all the way down to here or up here because this could have been an overshoot so this gray where my crosshairs is could have been the low of the trading range but i don't know that and at the time i did have this line drawn here as well as this one just to keep me aware that hey there are two potential bounce points. I don't know which one is the true trading range. So just kind of watch it carefully. So it's kind of edging down pretty strong. And at this point, it does violate this previous where I thought it could have been the low part of the trading range. So I said, okay, well, this line where my cursor is isn't important. I'm going to see if it comes down to this bottom one. It turns out it will be when you see the rest of the day. It actually touches three times. This comes down, spikes back up, no trades yet. Just kind of watching carefully. I do see a second entry short. 
It's like a first entry short, second entry short. I do like how this hammer formed or this candle formed, but I don't want to take this trade just because it's pretty close to the EMA. I don't know if it's going to bounce. I just don't know enough. I mean, if it closed below, I feel more confident. Close below, but not below this guy. If it closed below, then I would be more confident to take that trade. But right here, it's just like it, even though this candle confirmed it's breaking lower, I, I didn't feel that it was a high probability setup at that point. Prices continue going down. So I'm just waiting now. So down here, it's coming up and touching and confirming that this could be the low of the trading range. So it could be this big trading range. This is just a midpoint, midline. Just I have just to see if it's a bearish or bullish bias. And sometimes the prices respect this midline. It can be treated as two trading ranges. So prices continue moving. Now it's going back up. It's coming. So it's touching the midline, but it doesn't mean there's a trade there. Comes back down. So at this point, I'm seeing, okay, it's getting pretty choppy. It's a bearish bias at this point. And I see this particular setup coming up. So I see, okay, technically you have a new high here, first entry long, and right here, you're just gonna see it forms a second entry long. So second entry long, however, it's a big push up down, another big push up. You know, there's two attempts to push up now. So even though there's a second entry long here, I felt it was aggressive. It needed to be closer to the EMA for the bounce to happen. Also, the signal bar isn't very good. It's a pretty bearish signal bar. So even though the, the follow through on the trigger bar came up, there's no real trade that I feel safe. Because yes, you could take one tick above, but right here, there's probably, looks like there's resistance where my crosshairs is. So you don't really know if there's like a smaller channel being played right now. So certainly a trade could have been taken, but I felt it was aggressive and not worth the risk. So now I do see a second entry short now. So here's like, you can count this as a new low, first entry short, second entry short. It's also made a measured move up because it moved from here, from this low, one big leg, and then where this dotted arrow is showing is another big leg. And within these two, even in this one, there's two legs up, one leg up, and the second leg, and it comes back down, then one leg up, second leg up. So here, depending on your risk tolerance, it is a potential trade that you, know, you could possibly take. There's two clear legs up. It's a good bearish bar, good bearish bar, close at the bottom, there's enough room to the EMA. Uh, I don't know. In real time, I didn't think of it that way. I was a little afraid that it might keep going up. But in hindsight, because I was thinking it might want to come back up here before it turns down. Like if this had spiked all the way up to here or closer to where this arrowhead is, then close bearish like that. I think I feel more confident that there was a flash up. A lot of bears came in, pushed it back down, and there's enough room to go all the way back down to here. So this is more of a judgment call that I decided I didn't want to take. A little more conservative today, but I think that in hindsight, would have been a decent trade to take. But then I do take this trade because I do see a lower high because the first entry short, second entry short, lower high is confirming that the second entry short is true. Now, I didn't take it on this candle because even though this lower high formed, it's a very bullish signal bar. But on this candle, it did come all the way back down. So I actually took it a little bit lower inside this candle here. And it turns out working, but I didn't want I wanted to get out before it hit the EMA just because I might see it bounce. Now I you know got a small scalp out of, out of that, but in hindsight, I should have followed the rules more closely of just taking the core and then taking the runner all the way down. But if I did that, I'm fairly certain my runner probably would have gotten taken out on this candle anyways. So it wouldn't have been a big runner. It would have just been, you know. Uh, core profit about a point and then the runner probably got stopped out right here so it's a little bit more than a point but it's just a little note to myself to kind of follow the rules more closely would have gotten it a little bit more profit than just taking the whole position off but i decided to take the whole position off just because had the runner and execution been on one of these lows i would have given the runner more room and instead of taking the whole thing off i would see there's more chance for it to go up but this is kind of in the middle of the range middle of this trading range so instead of Potentially just getting break even on the on the runner, I decided just to take the whole position off. But as you can see, the prices kind of came back. It's respecting the EMA. It's a little choppy, hard to see. Uh, granted, there is a second entry long here because you could say there's a new high, first entry long, second entry long. But I don't like that this you know this candle isn't really convincing that it's a second entry long. Of course, you could have thought it was a failed second entry long, but the failed second entry long I also wasn't that keen on as well, just because. It's aggressive. It's right at the EMA. It's also right at the midline. It's the middle of the range. You don't really know if it's going to bounce or if it's going to continue back lower, even though there's a bearish bias. So certainly the trade is there, but I think it wasn't a high probability. Maybe if it looked better on your chart, 
you probably could have taken it. But for me, it's just a don't trade that. It's just too risky. You don't want hard eggs. It also turns out that, you know, prices are have been showing that clearly it's in the trading range. It's pretty choppy at this point. And I only took two trades and I was okay because the drama of the last couple of days had made me, you know, a little bit more careful, just being more picky about the trades I want to take, especially on a Friday going into a long weekend. I don't want to carry a loss in my brain that I had that day. So anyways, I saw a new low. It's confirming the, the bottom of the trading range. So it's a new low, first entry short, second entry short. Now, when I saw the second entry short, I wasn't sure if it's going to bounce and go back up, but I ended up taking this trade, but I didn't take it. I didn't even take it on this candle either because I wanted to make sure it get, got closer because right here now you do have a clear failed second entry because it broke down one tick below, but then it immediately reversed and broke up one tick above. So I engulfed this entire previous candle, but that's still not convincing enough for me to take a trade. However, when this one formed, I said, okay, this is clearly a very strong candle. The bulls are coming back in. It's respecting the low of this trading range. I put my entry one tick above this big bear bullish candle and I get filled, close the pulls back on me. It's coming back down at this point. I think I'm going to get stopped out because my stop's actually at the low of this candle. And so I'm just watching, waiting for them to take me out. But then this candle, boom, it fills me, fills my core and I'm trailing my runner behind one tick behind the low candle. And finally here, my stop is right here, but I'm wondering if it's going to, you know, this candle here, is it going to come back and flash me out right here? It ticks me out right there, but that was okay. I was still a pretty decent runner. And then of course it continues and it chops around. If it didn't take me out here and I was a little more aggressive, I kept my ticks down here, maybe two candles behind. It would have taken me out some time at this region anyways, but that was okay. So that was my third trade of the day. Prices continue moving, getting kind of choppy. I'm just watching. I do see a second entry long here, but I thought it was aggressive because you kept this a new high, first entry long, second entry long. But look at the size of these candles. They're very, very whippy. So I decided, you know what? Just uh, sit on your hands. You already got three successful green trades today. Just, just wait. And you do see a second entry short visual because you could say this is a new low. It would be a first entry short, second entry short. But then that's a little arbitrary, I feel, at this point because even though there's one leg up, two legs up, I did see like a measured move from here from the bottom here up to here. And then I saw that probably a new swing low here up to here. So certainly there is a visual second entry short. If you took it as one big clump here, first entry short after this big leg, it move up the second entry short. But I saw it like that, but I didn't take the trade just because, you know, it wasn't convincing enough for me. And then I do see a clean second entry short here. If you took this as a new low, but then I felt I'm just started starting to get picky now and nitpicky because I'm trying to almost force a trade because then you say, well, this is a new low. So, well, what didn't say that this was a new low? So you say this new low, this first inch short, second inch short, eh, it's a little iffy. Uh, certainly, I didn't want to just take that trade just, just for the sake of saying I saw a second entry short. So then price continue moving, moves up. I, at this point, established this trade trend channel. And I do see another second entry short. If you took this as a new low, first entry short, second entry short, it is aggressive because I can't really confirm that this is the top of the trading range. It could have been an overshoot, yes. So it could have been something like that, but I eventually settled on something up here. It is counter trend. So I just decided to leave that alone. The price is continue chopping. They're whipping around. I do see a second entry short fail breakout, but you see these three trades, four trades, they're all kind of counter trend. These were, you weren't sure what was going on yet because it couldn't come right back down, but this is clearly going to be a counter trend trade. And this is also clearly going to be a counter trend trade. There's enough room down to the EMA. But if there's a second entry short, you have to count this as the new low. First entry short, second entry short. But then you could also say there's one big leg, first entry short, second entry short. But then you have these intermediate junk occurrences here. So who's to say that this is really going to be the true, true uh, point to take a trade? It does touch the top of this trading range, the big one. But again, you know, you're not really sure this is, you're kind of sure, but it like broke out, failed. Here it could break out and continue, but it ends up failing but you don't know that at the time. And this is a really good candle. This candle is so-so, but I just left the trades alone because I just said, okay, well, I got three good trades. Let's just not press our luck. You have a second entry long here, but it is kind of, you know, not the best signal bar. So I just left that alone. Price continue moving up. Now it clearly breaks out of the trading range and it keeps moving up strongly. But I said, you know what? Uh, I'm not really sure what's happening. There could be a trading range here that I saw. You can say this is a new high, first inch long, second entry long, but this is a terrible signal bar right here to try to take a trade on. 
because you'd be taking it off this bearish candle, which closed the midpoint. So it'd be, it ends up being working if you're looking for a scalp, but you don't know that at the time and you don't want to just take any second entries that you see, especially if the context is kind of, you're not sure because it is kind of like plateauing. It's probably, probably a depletion of buyers here and it's just chop, chopping around and making lower highs and lower lows. So it's just kind of telling you, well, whether, whatever bias or belief that you have, you should probably just wait because there's nothing super clear yet. Do you see a second entry short here? Now, this trade, I'm thinking I might have taken had it er happened earlier in the day because this is a new low. It's coming up first inch short, second inch short. This is a pretty good signal bar. It's also at the top of this trading range breakout. It's going to fail. But if you look at it, it's like a, it's happening around 1236. There's only like 24 minutes left in the day. I didn't want to get stuck and I didn't want to get any potential profits back today. So you see that chops around it, but then you see a lower high. It is lower high. And even if this point, I don't know if this lower high is going to end up bouncing back off the top of this big trading range, or if it's going to break through and continue lower. And also, again, it's toward the end of the day. So certainly I don't want to be ambitious and try to squeeze out one more trade. And as you can see, it kind of respects the trading range, it kind of chops around and it just kind of moves around into the close. So that's how I saw the charts today. Hopefully that was helpful. I uh, was a little more conservative today. There were some pretty nice, clean two leg, two measure move legs all the way all over the place today. It was inside a big trading range. So, hopefully that was helpful. It's helpful to me.